So looking at the notes for 2.4, number 3. So just reviewing our chain rule again. If we're taking the derivative with respect to x of a composition of functions, what this notation is saying is we take the derivative of the outermost part. We don't change the innermost part. Then we take the derivative of that innermost part and we multiply them. This might only have to be done twice, but today we're going to also see some cases where this actually has to be done three times. We have to keep going until we get the innermost part of the parentheses. So we'll be looking at that. We're also going to look at double angle formulas. These are some formulas. Hopefully you saw these last year a little bit in pre-calc, plus we did them at the beginning of the year. If we have a function a sine u cosine u, an easier way of writing that is to divide the coefficient by 2 and then double the angle. So a sine u cosine u is a over 2 sine of 2u. So if I had given you a problem like, let's say we're working through a trig problem and we're taking the derivative and let's say that we end up with this as our answer. But then we look in the back of the book and instead of having this answer, they could have a different answer. Look at what a is. a is 8, u is 3x. So the formula is a over 2. So what's a over 2 going to give us? Everyone? It's going to be 4. Here's our a. is 8, so we divide it by 2, we get 4. And then it's the sine of 2 times u. Here's our u. So what's 2 times u going to give us? 6x. And so this would be another name for that. They give the exact same value. Like if I plugged in 30 degrees or if I plugged in pi over 4, I would get the same answer doing this as I would by just doing that. And that's easier to do. The other one we might come across is cosine squared of u minus sine squared of u. These are all equal to one another. We really don't come across these that much. I'm just going to kind of lightly X them out because this is the one we're going to see the most often. Cosine squared u minus sine squared u is always going to be the same as the cosine of 2u. The cosine of 2u. And then I want you guys now to try to simplify number 1 by using that first formula there. Avery, what did you get? Good. Perfect. We take our A value, we divide it by two sine and cosine together just turn into the sine of double the angle. Excellent. Okay, go ahead and do number two now. Here's your A, here's your U. Nick, what's it going to be? Uh, number two, sine. Good. All right, and then looking at the last one here, this follows this pattern. It's cosine squared u minus sine squared u. Notice in this one, we don't change the coefficient. The coefficient does not change in any way. And all of this is just going to go down to the cosine of double the angle. And so that's it right there. So you get an answer like this after you do the derivative. You look in the back of the book, they've got that. You need to recognize that is the same thing. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and do some derivatives. On these first three problems, wherever you see a 3, I want you to change it to a 2. All right, so our first problem then, we're trying to find the derivative. We are going to have to use the chain rule. To figure out how this works, we want to put in parentheses. So I want to think, if I were putting in a value for x, I'd have to square it, multiply it by pi, and then I'd have to take the sine. 
So it's the sign of this whole thing. So this is what's in parentheses, is that whole thing right there. So because I only have one set of parentheses there, this is going to just be the problem sine u. That's how I think of it. Whatever I have in parentheses, that's my u. So the derivative then of sine u is just going to be cosine of u then times the derivative of the u. So what is the derivative of the u going to be? Right. And now this, do I multiply this by the angle or does it go in the front? It goes in the front, doesn't it? So this is going to be 2 pi x cosine of pi x squared. Okay. All right, now looking at the next problem, they look very, very similar. Look at this. Sine matches up. This is pi x squared. This is pi x quantity squared. Look at how these are different, though. <coughs> if I were plugging in an x, I'd multiply it by pi. I'd get that answer. Then I'd have to square it, and then I'd have to take the sine. I have to think of this problem at first again as sine u. That's the first thing I'm doing. So what is the derivative of sine u? Again, it is just cosine u, right? So look at how I'm going to do this problem, because this is actually going to take more than just two derivatives. I just took the derivative of sine u. So I'm, I'm literally going to mark that out. I just took that derivative. Now I'm going to think of this problem. I have to do the derivative of this problem. Remember, whatever's in parentheses, that's going to be our u. So what's the derivative now of u squared? Everybody? What's the derivative of u squared? 2u. So now I'm going to have times 2u. So now I just took the derivative of u squared. So now I just did that derivative of the squared. So now the squared is gone. Now, I still have to keep going until I get to the innermost part of the parentheses. So I still have to do the derivative of pi x. What's the derivative of pi x? Just pi. And so now I've got all of this is going to have to get multiplied. So 2 times pi times pi times x. That's going to be 2 pi squared x cosine of pi x squared. Guys, let me show you another way you could have thought of this. I'm just going to kind of go right here. I could have thought of this problem as sine of pi squared x squared. Do you see how it, if I have pi x quantity squared, that's the same thing as pi squared x squared, isn't it? So now if I take this derivative, all I really have to think about now is I've got sine u. The derivative of sine u is cosine u. And now I have to do times the derivative of the u. What's the derivative of pi squared x squared? Well, I have to do pi squared times 2. What's pi squared times 2? Two? 2 pi squared. So I have to do times 2 pi squared x. And see how that's the same answer? So what I'm saying is you can just square each of those. Because it's multiplication, I can square each of those. And I can avoid having to use the chain rule once. Actually, I took the derivative one time, two times, three times. Whereas here, I only had to do it twice. All right, let's look at example three now. So on this one, I have to think of this problem as the sine of pi x. And then what happens to this whole thing? It's going to get what? what is it? Um, yeah, just a minute. Then the whole thing is going to get squared, right? So we want to think of what's happening last to that function. So the last thing that's happening is that we're taking it and we're squaring it. So we've got u squared, the outermost part of the parentheses. So what's the derivative then, guys, of u squared? 2u. So I'm going to have 2 
Don't change the U. So it's going to be the derivative of u squared is 2u to the first. So now I just did the derivative of the squared, so I'm going to forget about that. I'm working my way inside the parentheses. That's what we keep doing, is working our way inside further and further. So now what's the derivative of sine of something? Of sine u is going to be cosine u. Okay. So what did we just take the derivative of? Sine, right? So now the sine's gone. Working our way inside. We still are not inside the parentheses yet, so we have to do, now what's the derivative of pi x? Just pi. So do we change these angles? No. This pi gets multiplied by this 2. So our answer then is 2 pi sine pi x cosine pi x. That's our derivative. We just kept working our way inside. We first thought of it as u squared. That derivative was 2u. Then we had to do the derivative of sine u. That derivative was cosine u. The last thing we had to do was the derivative of pi x, which was just pi. And there we go. Do you notice, though, how this is really a sine u, cosine u, look at it, a sine u, cosine u, that's what this is, this is a sine u, cosine u, think about it, write down what would be another name for this, if you looked in the back of the book, this is not what you would see, How would you write that? Very good. So what he did was he took that a value, he divided it by 2, sine and cosine turned down to just sine of double the angle, 2 pi x. Excellent. All right, let's take a look at this one. So we have sine 3x times cosine 3x. If I start this problem right now, what rule would I have to use? Product rule, wouldn't I? Didn't I say times? I'd have to use the product rule. This gets pretty difficult using the product rule. If I notice, though, at the very beginning, I can avoid using the product rule. Does anybody know how I could avoid using the product rule? Vanilla? Yeah. See how in this problem, a is just 1. So, Noah, what's going to be another name for this function? Right. That is not the answer to the problem, though, is it? All that is is another name for my original problem. It's not another name for my derivative. That's just the original problem. So, what do we have to do now? Take the, take the derivative, right? And that's why correct notation is really important. Like if I hadn't said this is just f of x, if you might have thought this was the final answer. But I have to say no, this is just the original problem. So now I can just bring down this 1 half. And the derivative of sine u is just going to be cosine u times, we've got to work our way inside the parentheses, so we just took the derivative of 1 half sine, so the derivative of 6x is now just going to be 6. And so now half of 6 is going to be 3 cosine 6x. And that's going to be our derivative. If I had done it the other way, I would have done f prime g plus f g prime. And I'll tell you, it just would have been a lot tougher. If we have time, I'll go back and do that one the other way and just to show you. Okay, example five. First, you want to rewrite this with as many parentheses as it takes for you to understand the problem. If we were plugging in a value for x, we would have to multiply by pi, add 4, take the tangent, 
square it and multiply by 3. So another name for the original problem would have been this. That's it right there. So we have to think now, what are we going to do first? We're undoing this function. When we use the chain rule, we start on the outermost parenthesis, and that's our u. So from here to here, all of that is just u. So it's 3u squared. Matthew, what's the derivative of 3u squared? Right. And I don't change the u. 6, right here's my u. Don't change it. That's where people miss these problems is because they change that. They take the derivative of it too early. So we just did the 3 times 2. So now I'm finished with that. Some people do better if they literally mark that out to show that they're finished with that part of it. So now we look at our outermost parentheses. Well, this parenthesis is now gone, and now we're looking at this is now going to be our u. So now we're going to have to do the tangent of u. That's the u right there. And um, Avery, what's the derivative of tangent u? Good. She didn't change that either. The u does not change. So now I just took the derivative of tangent. So I'm finished with tangent now. That's gone. Working our way inside. Now we're finally to the innermost part of the parentheses. Sarah, what's the derivative of pi x plus 4? Pi. And so now we've got all of this that we just need to kind of write as one expression. The pi doesn't change the angles. All it does is it goes out in front. And we just kind of slide it all together here as one. And that's going to be the final answer right there. All right. Let's do one more. <clears throat> so on this one, we're going to rewrite our radical x as just x to the 1 half. This is subtraction. It's not multiplication. That's kind of messy. I'm going to rewrite it. It's subtraction, not multiplication or division, so I can just take the derivative of each term. Casey, what's the derivative of x to the 1 half? Good. Now we're going to take this derivative. Now, is the whole sign getting squared, or is it just the 3x that's getting squared? Just the 3x, isn't it? So really, my problem is just minus 1 half sine u. That's what I'm doing right now. All of this is like that. That's the outermost part of my parentheses. So I'm really just going to do the derivative is going to be minus 1 half. The derivative of sine u is going to be cosine u. Don't change it. Okay. So I just took care of the 1 half and the sine. So I just took care of the 1 half and the sine. That's done. So working my way inside these parentheses. So now I have this. See this parenthesis? That's my new u. So now I'm going to have u squared. The derivative of u squared is 2. Don't take the derivative too early. It's just 2u. And now we finally, we just did the derivative of u squared. So the square is gone now. And now I just have to do times the derivative of 3x, and that's 3. So this part would be written as 1 over 2 radical x. For this, all of this is just going to get multiplied by the 1 half. So I've got 2 times a half. That's just going to be 1. 3 times 3x is going to be 9x cosine of 3x squared. See, guys, on this part right here, let me just go back to this minus 1 half sine 3x squared. If I could have just squared that whole thing out, 
If I square that 3 and square that x, which I'm allowed to do as long as it's multiplication, not if it's addition, though. Just let me show you this. This is faster to do it this way than I'm going to show you. This is minus 1 half cosine u times the derivative of the u, which is 18x. And then see how negative 1 half times 18x would still have given me that 9x. But the thing is, I have to go back now and rewrite this angle the way that it was written at the beginning because they should match up. They should be the same. So if I'm going to do it that way, then I'm going to do negative 1 half times 18 is negative 9x cosine. Go back and rewrite it the correct way. But I think you're better off just really understanding that whole process that we did there. All right, what questions? Any questions on that? <coughs> Okay, pretty good. So you guys are going to have a worksheet to do first that I want you to do 